Welcome to the Global Investor Podcast, a show that focuses on helping foreign investors enter the lucrative U.S. real estate market. Host Charles Carrillo combines decades of real estate investing experience with a professional background in international banking to interview experts in all areas of U.S. real estate investing. Now, here's your host, Charles Carrillo. Welcome to another episode of the Global Investors Podcast. I'm your host, Charles Crillo. T today we have Yona Weiss. Uh, Yona is a business director at Madison Specs, a national cost segregation leader. He has assisted assets or clients in saving tens of millions of dollars on their assets and on taxes through cost segregation. He has a background in teaching and a passion for real estate and helping others. He also is a real estate investor and host of a new podcast called Wise Advice. So thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you, Charles. I appreciate the, you having me and let's do this. So what was your professional background prior to starting with your current business, Mass and Specs? Um, professionally, like, like you mentioned in the introduction, I was a teacher for about 15 years. And then I really wanted to get into uh, real estate due to the low income that uh, you know teachers make. And, mm. It's just like a side hustle, but then I realized that there's a lot of opportunities. So I was a commercial mortgage broker for a little while. I got my real estate broker's license just to get a feel of the real estate market because I wanted to actually learn how to invest myself. And um, just residential at that time, did a few fix and flips and then kind of one thing led to the other. And I wound up with this company, Madison, uh, Commercial Real Estate Services and working specifically in the division business development in uh, the cost segregation division. So that's been, you know, been about three years going on that. Great, great. So cost segregation is something that confuses, I think, every real estate investor. And especially if it confuses the investor it's, uh, or the operator, it definitely confuses the, the limited partner or passive investor. Right. So can you explain a little bit about what is cost segregation? Sure, absolutely. And just to maybe give a step back and background, mm -hmm. Not that confusing once we'll understand the principles. So I hope that through this, you know, a few bullet points of understanding, mm -hmm. we can go, you know, then have at least the tools to understand why it's so important and why it's so beneficial. So first and foremost, it's depreciation. Okay. And we're going to understand depreciation at first, because that's really what cost segregation is. Cost segregation is just a way to more an advanced form of depreciation instead of just a very simplified form, which most investors just take the simplified uh, method of depreciation, when in fact, you have the opportunity to do this advanced form and get so much more tax deductions and tax benefits from it. So depreciation sounds like a negative thing, right? Means, right, something's going down in value. When in fact, it's just all depreciation is from a tax perspective is the IRS is, the IRS gave a tax deduction based on the value of the property. Um, and they allow you to write off the entire value of the building that you buy over a certain number of years. Okay, so for commercial property, it's over a 39 year period. For residential, which includes multifamily, it's over a 27 and a half year period. So that's depreciation in a nutshell. If you buy a million dollar building, okay, you have first to take off land. Land is a small amount, doesn't depreciate, but the rest of the building, which is usually, you know, anywhere from 80 to 90%, depending on where you are, let's say 80% of the building. So $800,000 is left over to now depreciate that. And as a tax write off literally over 39 or 27 year period. So you're going to get every single year, a 20 to $30,000 tax deduction per million dollars of investment uh, just wow. because you bought a property. Okay. And that's going to be deducted from your income tax. So it's going to offset your income tax. That's depreciation in a nutshell. It's good as it is. Okay. Cost segregation, like the weird name, right, sounds, we are segregating out the cost of the building. Okay, so what does that mean? That means the IRS actually gave different categories of assets within a property that depreciate at a faster life. Now, again, it doesn't mean they really go down in value because most likely a property is going up in value, it's appreciating but it means they gave you a, an ability to write off those assets at a faster rate. The only catch is you have to do a cost segregation study in order to write those assets off at a faster rate. Okay. So one of those categories is called um, 
personal property or tangible movable property, which includes so many more things than you might even think of, like any furniture, right? Things that are movable, appliances, um, you know, things like that. That's a no brainer, but even stuff like carpeting, right? Or vinyl flooring, um, you know, curtains, window treatments, special purpose electric and lighting and all kinds of stuff like that. And fixtures for so many, there's over a dozen categories of things, but those are just a few examples of things that actually depreciate on a five year schedule. Okay, so getting a cost segregation engineer into the property to identify all those different things, right? The cabinets, okay, there's, you know, 50 unit building, there's 50 kitchen cabinets, that has a lot of value to it. And now you can write that off as a tax write off in five years instead of lumping it all together. Okay. So what's the process of getting a cost segregation done? Is that you, you started with it, you bring in someone, but how does that whole process work? Um, it's, first of all, it's a pretty straightforward, simple process from beginning to end. Okay. There's usually a few steps involved. The first step is we always run a free analysis an estimate, which will show you even before we do anything, go into the property, anything like that, we'll just look at some details and tell you what our projections of the tax benefit is going to be. So it's really a no brainer to look at a property and say, Hey, if I do it, this is what I'm going to save on taxes. And it's, and it's always a conservative projection. So you know, ahead of time, you know, what your result is going to be. Okay. So it's not like a guess, like, well, what happens if we hire you and we don't find any tax benefit? No, you know, up front, you know, at the minimum, you know, conservatively what you're going to get. That's the first step. Second step is when you engage with a conservation company, we'll send an engineer out to the property. Okay. That's the uh, first step uh, is required. An engineer actually has to go to the property, walk the property, take pictures, measurements, get basically a full analysis of the building and all the units. Third step is they come back and take that data and prepare a report, which, you know, breaks out all the costs of, you know, segregating the cost, right, into all these different categories, creates this, you know, very detailed report, which is, you know, anywhere from 80 to 100 pages long, um, extreme detail, a lot of source sources to the tax code, showing where we get all those numbers from. And then that produces an updated depreciation schedule, which now you take that and plug that into your tax return. That's it. Like okay. that's it. And that's just provided to your CPA. And exactly. then they will- Once you get that, yeah, they'll take that depreciation schedule, that updated depreciation schedule, and then go and just plug that into the tax return. Is there anything uh, specifically that investors should know before getting a cost segregation done or starting one? I think the first, you know, the most important thing is really just to know, um, is this going to be beneficial? Mm -hmm. It's not going to be beneficial for everyone. And therefore, that's why we provide this upfront analysis to show you, you can now take those numbers, discuss it with your CPA, and say, hey, is this going to be good for our situation or not? Yeah. Okay. And w does the deal size matter? Like, are you guys working on a specific size deals or does it have to be, or it could be anything or? It could be anything. Theoretically, we usually, um, you know, my rule of thumb is any property purchased for over a million dollars is usually a no brainer. There's so mm -hmm. much benefit there. And I say purchase because the depreciation is based not on the value of the property per se, but actually the purchase price, what you actually spend. And it may not be what you spend again, because you may have, you know, this property financed from a bank for 70, 80%. You're putting down a small amount. You may have it seller financed, which means you're putting zero down. Nevertheless, you get the tax write off on the dollar value of, uh, of what was spent. So under that value, under a million dollars, it still can be beneficial. And we've done plenty of them, but you know, anything over that, it just exponentially grows the tax benefits. And we've done, you know, many, believe it or not, over a billion dollar transactions. Oh. Uh, so, you know, and that's just, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's crazy the amounts of tax saved. What are, what are the costs for, for performing a cost segregation? So there's usually a one time uh, up, you know, one time, not upfront, but one time fee based on the scope of work involved, which is going to vary slightly from property to property, but it's usually in a pretty, um, pretty general range, you know, somewhere between for us, for example, now in 2020, our price is somewhere between four and $10,000, you know, depending on the size, shape, location, um, type of property. Okay. An office building, for example, that has a lot of suites in it. Engineers and each one is going to be unique. There's a lot more work involved there. Um, maybe a little more time consuming, 
there's going to be a lot more um, you know, work involved in that. So that's, that's it. One time. Okay. Now there's like, you were saying that I, I take it the, with the, what are the differences between straight line appreciation? And then there's also, you have accelerated depreciation. Right. So it's actually a misnomer. This is, this is when we talk about cost segregation, usually we describe it as accelerated depreciation because mm -hmm. what we're doing is we're taking what was on a 39 year or 27 and a half year schedule and we're accelerating certain assets to a five year schedule or a 15 year schedule. So those are, that's what we say, but in truth, um, cause straight line depreciation is just taking the entire thing and lumping it into a 27 and a half year bucket and taking equal amounts every year for 27 years. But in truth, there's actually several other slightly varied forms of depreciation, which I'm not going to get too in depth in the tax, but there's something called, you know, double declining balance or 200 declining balance, which is a calculation of even if you're doing the 27 and a half year method, you can actually front load a certain percentage of that so that it um, is more heavily loaded in the first year's um, of the 27 and a half years and less so in the 20 in, in the later years of the 27. So that's called 200 declining balance. We also do that, apply that, but you know, in simple terminology, it's, you know, accelerating it to a five year, 15 year schedule. Okay. Um, I've heard there's some parts of Trump's plan, tr uh, tax plan from a couple of years back that are in regards to depreciation. Mm -hmm. And I heard some of them might be expiring in the next couple of years. Uh, so how, do, how does that work? How does his tax plan work with depreciation? So the biggest, um, probably the biggest news or the biggest benefit for cost segregation was actually in that tax plan, the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, which uh, is something called 100% bonus depreciation. Um, so what that did was allows you, a new tax law that allowed you to take any amount of depreciation, excuse me, any amount of assets that depreciate at a faster life under 20 years. So that's all the stuff that we're finding in a cost segregation study, once you do the cost segregation study and you identify and allocate, and sometimes if it's between, you know, 20 and 30%, it could be even more so in certain types of buildings, of the building reclassified into those values, okay? So let's give our example of a million dollar building and 800,000 is being depreciated, right? But 20% of that or $200,000 or 25%, let's say $200,000 of that is fits into those faster categories. The 100% depreciation rule, bonus depreciation rule says you can choose to take that entire amount in the first year. So as a tax write off, $250,000 in the first year as a tax write off, which is huge. I mean, yeah. it's incredible. Yeah, that is, I mean, for an investor that's investing, especially if they're passive investing on it, and they start finding out that their first year, they're getting these huge tax breaks coming back on their K-1s when they're receiving them. I mean, that is, uh, it's something, yes, yeah. yeah, it's awesome. So what do we have? I've heard that there's, there might be changes in regards to depreciation response to COVID, um, which is obviously just starting up right now and right. possibly the effects of it are now hitting real estate. Um, what, yeah. is there anything new that they've talked about or that they're proposing? There are a few things. Um, they, you know, we're talking here on, uh, on April 1st, right. And they just passed this huge cares act, um, you know, on March 27th. So it's four days ago. We're, we're still mulling through this 800 page, um, report and, and what, what of those, what in there actually applies to taxes and what will apply to cost segregation. The CPAs on our team are, are spending, you know, basically yeah. going through that. But a couple of things that we've already noticed, and I'm not going to say this definitively because we haven't, you know, gone into all the nitty gritty, but a couple of things is one thing that's called the qualified improvement property, which was kind of a glitch in the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act in the 2017 tax reform, there was a glitch in there that it was meant to take what's called Qualified Improvement Property or QIP, which refers to commercial buildings specifically, not multifamily, not residential, specifically commercial buildings and really applies to like restaurants and retail, that kind of stuff. We're actually doing a significant amount of interior 
improvements on the property. So for example, let's take a restaurant where you would go buy a building and then you put in all your, you know, equipment and all the you know, kitchen appliance, everything like that, all that money spent, if anything in there actually um, can actually now be considered a 15 year improvement uh, asset depreciating on a 15 year schedule, any money that was spent and that would apply, excuse me, that would be eligible for the bonus 100% bonus depreciation. So that should have been included in the tax reform in 2017. However, it was left out. And for some reason, someone had the, you know, the state of mind to actually remember that and put it in the, the new act. I don't know how it got in there. It doesn't have really anything to do with, um, you know, I guess it does have to do with economic, uh, you know, benefit for yeah. those restaurant owners, et cetera. But that's one of the biggest things because that again, applies to cost segregation, 100% bonus depreciation. The second thing, and again, we're still looking at this, is another thing that was outlawed in the tax reform two years ago, or three years ago, and now they wrote something in that it's going to come back, at least temporarily, which is something called a net operating loss carryback, okay? So carryback, a uh, uh, net operating loss means, and this is something that happens when you use a tremendous amount of depreciation. Okay. If you have more tax deductions than you have income, what that does is that creates a loss. It creates a net operating loss, right? You are actually making money. Okay. You're, you, let's say you made a hundred thousand dollars, but you have $200,000 of depreciation. That hundred thousand dollars, that $200,000 depreciation, ex excuse me, first knocks off a hundred thousand dollars of income from your income taxes. And you get to keep all that hundred thousand dollars without paying taxes on it. That's in your pocket. But what that does is that leaves over another hundred thousand dollars that you can't use um, because there's nothing else to offset. What that does, it creates a net operating loss. Okay. That loss carries forward with you, which means you can use it next year on your tax return. So it's still going to benefit you to get all that depreciation because it's moving forward. What they did when they made the 100% bonus depreciation in 2017 is that they outlawed a net operating loss carry back, which means if you create a huge amount of deductions in 2020, you can't now retroactively apply that to your income in 2019. Okay. You used to be able to, to go back five years to take net operating losses and actually offset income and get a refund on your taxes. Again, I don't want to get too deep involved in this, but this is a huge benefit because they now reinstated net operating loss carry backs. Okay. So you can now get a huge bonus depreciation and now offset income from a year or two or three years ago. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's very, that's very enticing. That first part of it, what you're saying in regards to commercial properties and the tenant improvements yes. for restaurants, that's, that's great because those are going to be obviously a very hard hit, um, already um, section 100%. of our real estate asset classes and for also the tenants that are actually putting that money out. So, um, so how, when someone's working with your company, what are we talking about in general of, I mean, you work in all different States. Um, how long does it usually take to do one of these, one of the process, uh, a process of doing cost segregation? So Madison specs, a company I work for, we're actually specs is an acronym for specialized property engineering cost segregation. It's a little confusing. We just like to call it specs, but we are the biggest cost segregation company um, solely focusing on cost segregation in the country. So we work in all 50 States. Um, we have a whole a huge team of engineers in house on staff and the process, like I said, usually, you know, we create that analysis up front, And then from that point on, once you engage with us, it's usually about a six to eight week process um, to complete the entire study. And that usually just has to do with the fact that we have such a huge volume and we only have such a size team to take all the work we're doing. For example, in 2019, we did over 2,500 uh, cost wow. So that, you know, it's a lot of work. We have a team of only about 60 uh, people in house, including our operations team that does a lot of the actual nitty gritty work, the engineers, accountants, um, so yeah, so that's, that's the process. Pretty straightforward. We'll tell you upfront what your tax benefits are going to be. We'll tell you upfront what the fees are going to be. It's uh, not contingent on any tax savings, but really just, um, 
you know, trying to help people out, save taxes. And this is really why I love my job because I get to help people. And really I get to just educate people, which is what I love doing anyways. But in turn, that helps people save hundreds, hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars, tens of millions of dollars in taxes, which it's incredible. That's awesome. So how can uh, our listeners learn more about you and your company? Um, you can check me out on LinkedIn. That's probably the best way to find me. I'm actually very active. They're posting a lot of content. You can check out madisonspecs.com. That's uh, our website. It's uh, actually going under a renovation. So only some of the pages are the new pages and the other ones are uh, getting updated as we speak. But yeah, please check me out there and you know, love to love to see if we can help you. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for being on the show today. I'll put all those links uh, into the show notes and uh, looking forward to uh, connecting with you in the future. Likewise, Charles. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Hi guys, it's Charles from the Global Investors Podcast. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you're interested in getting involved with real estate, but you don't know where to begin, set up a free 30-minute strategy call with me at schedulecharles.com. That's schedulecharles.com. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Global Investor Podcast. If you like the show, be sure to subscribe on iTunes or Google Play to get new weekly episodes. For more resources and to receive our newsletter, please visit globalinvestorpodcast.com. And don't forget to join us next week for another episode. Nothing in this episode should be considered specific, personal, or professional advice. Any investment opportunities mentioned on this podcast are limited to accredited investors. Any investments will only be made with proper disclosure, subscription documentation, and are subject to all applicable laws. Please consult an appropriate tax, legal, real estate, financial, or business professional for individualized advice. Opinions of guests are their own. Information is not guaranteed. All investment strategies have the potential for profit or loss. The host is operating on behalf of Harborside Partners Incorporated exclusively.